Welcome to this free lesson from a larger course you can access on digitalcreatorschool.com. My name is Lucas Ridley, and I'm the instructor of this course. I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you enjoy this or want to see more like it. Thanks for watching. So now let's model what we're going to actually animate in the lesson after this. I'm going to move pretty quickly. So if you're new to Maya, this might feel a little fast. You can always stop, rewind, rewatch, or ask a question. I can help you out there. All right, so let's create a cube. There's a couple of ways we can do that. We can go to the poly modeling tool shelf and hit this cube here. We could also go to create and go to polygon primitives and choose a cube here. Now, whether or not you have interactive creation on or off gives you the ability to draw out where you want the cube to be created and how high uh, the cube is. I have that off because I just want the default cube in the center of the world. And so that's where it's going to put it when I hit that button. So now we can access a lot of different attributes from the inputs category in the channel box. If the channel box isn't open, you can select it from this far right kind of tab menu here and open it there. It's also available with this top right button right here. All right, so from the inputs, I can just hit polycube one and that will drop down all of these options that are available to us. So what I wanna do is increase the height to 10. Then I wanna increase the subdivisions as well of the height to maybe 50. Then we can increase the subdivisions in the other by just a few, just to give us a little more uh, geometry to work with. And then all we need to do is go to the modeling menu here, which this gives you access to different types of menus on the top. So this will just change the menu items up here. Um, we can go to deform and go down to nonlinear. And I'm just gonna tear this off for a second. And I want to create a twist on this. So I'm gonna click twist, and then I'm gonna click the cube again and hit bend. So I've created two deformers on the same piece of geometry and we haven't done anything yet to either deformer. On the bend handle, I'm gonna make sure that the bend inputs are open and go to curvature here and just middle mouse drag in the viewport will increase that value. You could also click the value area and type it in, um, but I like to click the attribute itself and then I can middle mouse drag in the viewport. So I wanna increase that all the way to 180. So we, now we have this kind of donut shape. And when I go to the twist handle, now I can go to the inputs of this, drop it down and increase the start angle. And what we're looking for is essentially a 90 degree turn here. You can choose to go more or less depending on what kind of effect you want your Mobius strip to have. But I'm also wanna turn off the grid here just for a moment so it's a little less distracting. There's a bunch of options up here that I'm not gonna go through every one, but turning on and off the grid is this one. We could also turn on anti-aliasing just for the viewport. It's not gonna affect the render, just that so we get a little bit crisper view in our viewport and it's easier to see. So now we've essentially created the main part of our animation and now in the next lesson, we will actually animate it. So this is basically the modeling portion done. See you in the next lesson. I wanted to just quickly interrupt the video to remind you to subscribe to the channel. If you like videos like this, let me know. Also hit the bell notification icon so you get notified when new videos come out like this. And give a thumbs up and a comment if you wanna see more like it or to suggest a video that you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. So now let's animate what we've modeled here. I'm gonna close the nonlinear deformer window because we don't need that anymore. And I wanna select the twist handle from the outliner and go over to the twist inputs to drop down those attributes we're familiar with now. And I'm going to shift select start and end angle so that they can be selected together at the same time. And if I middle mouse drag now in the viewport, we can see that they move together in this kind of psychedelic looping fashion. So I'm gonna undo that just to get back to the original values of 90 and zero. And what I wanna do is right click on these and set a keyframe, go to key selected. So now I want to left click and drag in the timeline to go to frame 120. And I can change these values and I will need to keyframe them again. Even though we have auto keyframe on is a button down here. It's I think it's off by default. So you might have to click that on if you want to auto keyframe something, which means any keyed value, if you change it, it will remember that and create a new key if you're on some frame that doesn't have a key yet. That's not true for the attributes that we're messing with. So we actually need to manually create those keys. So I'm going to select both of those start and end angle, then middle mouse drag in the viewport to uh, 360 on the end angle. Cause I know it started at zero and I want to go around one time, which is 360 degrees. 
And so once I get close, I can see what the math is for adding 360 to 90, so I don't have to do that in my head. So then I can just round these up or round them to whatever they're closest to, 360 and 450 are what we're needing. But you can notice that it's a lighter shade of red. That means that value is keyframed, just not on the frame that we're on right now. So we wanna make sure we do set that keyframe on both of these. So I'm gonna shift select both of them and I'm going to right click and choose key selected. So now we get that darker shade of red and we get the red tick in the timeline that shows us it is indeed keyframed. Now, if I hit Alt V or I, I can hit the play button right here, I will play the timeline and we can watch the animation play back. Now, if we notice it looping, which you wanna have this icon here showing the loop symbol, if you click it once, it'll just loop once or will ping pong back and forth. As you click that button, it'll toggle through those options. So we want the loop one because we want to see this loop. Now, if, you, if we're watching this, we can notice that it slows down and speeds back up. That's because the tangent handles of the animation curves are set to auto. And we can visualize that by opening up the graph editor. So let's hit escape to stop playing back and go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. That will open up a new window, and if we hit A on the keyboard, it will frame all for the graph editor, and we can make this bigger if we want. And now we can see the value change over time. That's all the graph editor is. It looks really complicated. All it's saying is over time, which is what I'm doing now, I'm going through time, this value changes from here to there. That's all that's telling us. Now, the curve itself is saying how it's interpreted between those two values we can see that the change over time starts slow. That's why it slows down. And then it speeds up. That's why it speeds up in our, in our viewport. And then it slows down again. So that's how we're visualizing. Why is this speeding up and slowing down? It's because the tangent handles are auto keyed, right? Are auto tangent, I should say. So if I select both of those keyframes by just click dragging, I can actually access the other interpolation methods instead of auto, which you can see we're on right here. I can go to linear and that will straighten out the tangents of the curves. So I'm just gonna move this to my other window here so that we can scrub the timeline and now watch as I hit Alt V to play back, we can see that this should loop seamlessly and not speed up or slow down. So now that we can't, we can't tell when is this start and end frame because everything is constant. And so that's how you can make a looping animation work and not catch the, your eye of telling when the start and end of something is. If it's all moving at the same speed co constantly, you can't tell where that loop point is. So now we have animated our Mobius strip. In the next lesson, we're gonna take this a little bit further and I'm gonna show you how to customize this to make it more your own. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this free lesson. If you wanna see the entire course, you can become a member at digitalcreatorschool.com to get the course in its entirety, as well as all the courses available on the website, in addition to all future courses that will be published as a monthly or annual member. You can cancel any time. I will see you there. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell notification icons, as well as leave me a comment if you wanna see more videos like this, or if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.